right, this isn't the catchiest of titles, non-renal disease causes of a decreased USG, because a lot of these are actually renal, they're just not renal disease. So why care, right? Well, you should care because acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease have a much different prognosis than a lot of these diseases slash syndromes that we're going to talk about, and they have very different treatments. But they can look like renal disease, of course, because if you can't concentrate your urine, if you have other disease going on, you become dehydrated, which then results in a decrease in GFR with azotemia, and then you can't concentrate your urine because of the initial problem. So it's very important to kind of identify these and have some tricks to recognize them. I promise you will see this in practice, and you don't want to be the one who misses a very treatable disease or reverse where you start treating an animal and it winds up being kind of the worst disease. All right, that's our favorite picture of the kidney. So again, as a review, I love to review this stuff. So concentrating ability in the kidney. That first important place, of course, is that proximal convoluted tubule. If that isn't working, it's from renal disease. So we're not talking about that area. The next is that medullary constant, this medullary, um, the medulla, we'll just say it's medulla, and medullary concentrating ability. And so this saltiness, half of it is from sodium and chloride, and of course we know where that comes from, which is that ascending loop of Henle, reabsorbing sodium and chloride, but the other half comes from urea. And of course the urea is reabsorbed um, in our distal tubule as well as our proximal tubule, and it's done under the influence of ADH in our distal tubule, um, and it's done through a variety of things in our proximal tubule, and one of it's a decreased tubular flow, which is why in dehydration you can sometimes see an increased urea. And so these both give you a nice salty medulla, and so that is our medullary interstitium. So that gives us an ability to, again, reabsorb water here. That is not water, that's sodium. Let's try that again. Reabsorb water here in our descending. And so while this can be affected by kidney disease, we're going to talk about, again, non-kidney disease. Of course, we have aldosterone. That's another one. And we have ADH. And then we also have just the rate of our tubular flow. So how quickly things flow through our kidneys is determined by, of course, how much water we intake or what, if we're on fluids. And the faster the rate of fluids or the faster that we're diuresing, the less time there is to reabsorb things. So as things are kind of in our tubules, if there's decreased tubular flow, you're going to reabsorb more of those solutes, which allows you to then reabsorb some water. So let's move on a little bit and talk about then how you lose this ability to concentrate. Okay, so the medullary interstitium, remember it's this area right in here. So that's our medullary interstitium. So medullary washout means that you it's essentially the saltiness goes away. And so that can be due to long-term, and I don't have an, a great number for long-term, but long-term hyponatremia and hypochloridemia. So they're both low. Why does that happen? Well, that can be from an animal on fluids. So they are getting fluids long-term low sodium and chloride fluids. It can be from diuretics, so loop diuretics, those loop of Henle diuretics. Um, it can be due to a lack of aldosterone. So I'm going to write aldosterone on here because it's going to become relevant. And of course, a lack of aldosterone is, um, I've lost my ability to write, there we go. And that's, of course, Addison's disease, which you hear a lot of because it involves everything. So diuretics is another one we mentioned. And again, these are non-renal disease type things um, and the fluid therapy. Other things, the higher fluid rate, so instead of diuretics, we're going to say diuresis. So this could actually be due to solute diuresis. So we see this with diabetes mellitus and glucose. So too much glucose in the plasma, it exceeds the renal threshold, spills over, and mannitol is another one. And so all of these can cause you to not concentrate your urine, but it won't necessarily be due to renal disease. And then of course the renal disease one, 
is renal disease. And so that's where you actually have damage to your medullary interstitium. And this causes medullary washout. So again, that's long-term sodium acroy. The other one is decreases in urea. And this isn't just like you got fluids for a day and now your urea is low. This is longer term. And we can see this in animals with portosystemic shunt um, and hepatic failure. And of course, you know that the liver converts ammonia to urea. And so if the liver's not working, you won't get that. And so you get a low urea. And then you can also get medullary washout. So of course we did um, lack of aldosterone just in this last one, right? So aldosterone lack, medullary washout. So lack of aldosterone itself, of course, in Addison's results in um, an inability to concentrate the urine, and that's because this normally reabsorbs sodium and chloride, so you're going to lose sodium and chloride, and then you'll lose water. And of course these animals tend to have a very high potassium, they can be dehydrated, of course, because they can't concentrate, and so then they can become azotemic. And these are all the things that are from a lack of aldosterone. The lack of glucocorticoids, we've talked about this before, is separate and unrelated to the aldosterone, and these guys mean that they have, right, so no stress on their leukogram when they should be stressed. Um, you can see decreases in cholesterol, you can see increases in calcium, decreases in glucose. And of course, these animals present, because they have GI signs often, um, because of this lack of glucocorticoids. We'll talk more about this later. This looks a lot like acute kidney injury, um, acute renal failure. So don't misdiagnose an Addisonian for that. We'll practice. So of course we already did a diabetes insipidus case. We did that central case, the boxer. Uh, so you can have diabetes insipidus, which is central, you lack. That is a terrible A. Let's try that. A central DI where you actually lack ADH, and this might be congenitally, although that's super rare. It's more often going to be related to trauma or cancer. But more common is nephrogenic DI. Again, it can be inherited, uncommon. I'm going to keep trying here. Again, this can be congenital, but acquired is the most common, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And acquired means that your ADH receptor in the distal tubule, well, actually in your collecting duct, uh, does not respond to ADH. And the big, the big, big kind of differentials are going to be hypercalcemia, which I kind of went through causes of hypercalcemia in class. We'll do it again. Um, e. coli, so pyometra, uh, as well as urinary tract infections, pyelonephritis. Um, steroids, not just a stress leukogram, but we're talking steroid administration, Cushing's disease, um, persistently low potassium. This one's hard to prove, so we're going to pretend that that doesn't really happen and certainly drugs, but let's definitely focus on these and we'll practice some cases of those. So again, this is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus and these are acquired causes. 